Hello, I am here to tell you about UMD Health Services. I am often asked if Health Services is a real clinic. Yes, we are a real clinic, just like your family practice clinic at home. And if I may be so bold, maybe a bit better. My name is Deb Mitchell, and I'm the clinic manager at UMD Health Services. The main reason I say we are a bit better than your family practice clinic at home is because of who we see. We only see students, not faculty, staff, or community members, only students. This gives us a unique opportunity to know them, to know what's happening on campus, and to provide what the students need. We are mainly student service fee funded, and we bill insurance for medical services above a simple office visit. As I said, we are a real clinic. On the medical side, we have two physicians, three RNs, two nurse practitioners, one who concentrates on women's health. We have medical assistants, a full lab and x-ray and business support. Our medical team sees everything your family practice office would see at home. These are just a few examples. Another reason we are a bit better than a regular family practice clinic is that our clinic also has mental health counselors who see only students as well. We have eight counselors and one case manager. Because our counselors only see students, they have a plethora of experience with college age issues. Everything from, I was really excited to move and get away from my parents telling me what to do. And now that I am, I don't know that I like being away from my parents with no one telling me what to do as well as things like depression, anxiety, eating disorders, and relationship issues. All things medically and mentally that can inhibit a student's retention and success while in school. If there is anything that we find out of our scope of practice, we refer within the community. Our business support staff will walk the student through the referral process because another advantage to only seeing students is we are able to take the time to educate about how the health system works. So they leave us being better able to advocate for themselves. It's a time between when parents and guardians have to handle all the things to when they are out in the community and it's, oh, well, you're an adult now. You have to do it all on your own. A quick note about our dispensary. We have a few commonly prescribed medications that students can purchase for much less than their average copay. However, if they do need something prescribed, we will send a script to whatever pharmacy they choose. The closest pharmacy to us is Walgreens on Kenwood Avenue. It's about a mile away and on a bus line. If they do not have a car, can't get a ride, or are too sick to take the bus, they can let us know and we will have a taxi voucher for them to get to the pharmacy or even to appointments we referred them to in the community. We never want transportation to be a barrier to getting the care they need. This map shows well he where health services is on campus. We are right among the dorms, right here. We are a real clinic. We have real business hours. We are open 8 to 4, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, and 9 to 4 on Thursdays. Summer, we are open 9 to 3, Monday through Friday. We are closed for two weeks over winter break when all the students are off campus. And if the campus closes for any weather related emergencies, so do we. If your student happens to get sick when we are closed, there are two excellent hospital systems in the area, St. Luke's and St. Mary's Essentia. Both of them have walk-in, urgent care, and emergency centers. For a mental health emergency, there is Birch Tree Center. We have the names, addresses, and phone numbers on our website, our voicemail, and outside of our doors with maps if a student is in need outside of our hours. Of course, they can always call 911 and our campus police will help in an emergency as well. Students in a degree program and registered for six or more credits are required to have health insurance. If your student does not have health coverage, the Student Health Benefit Plan is the university-sponsored insurance that eligible students are automatically enrolled in. It's a great plan if you don't have insurance. 
If a student already has insurance coverage, they can waive this plan by going online and providing proof of their current plan. I just want to caution you that if the plan isn't waived, your student will be enrolled and billed for this semester. While it's billed per semester, the waiver that you file is valid for one year. The Student Health Benefit Plan offices are in the Twin Cities. Health Services doesn't manage or administer this plan, but we get a lot of questions about it, which is why I've included it here. UMD Health Services accepts all insurance carriers. The question will be if your insurance accepts us. If your insurance requires in-network providers or a preferred clinic to be designated, I recommend contacting them. Let them know your student will be at school and change the student's preferred clinic to UMD Health Services while they are on campus. This can be changed back and forth when the student is home and on campus. Students who have paid the student service fee are not billed for office visits as health services is student service fee funded. Services such as x-rays, lab tests, immunizations, and injections, minor surgery, and procedures are billed to insurance. Patients are required to provide proof of insurance at each visit. Students are responsible for anything not covered by their insurance. What this means for your student is that we do not collect copays when they need to be seen for a medical appointment. In fact, if your student is seen and doesn't receive a billable service, we don't even bill the insurance company at all. If your student does not have a copy of their insurance card, please request one. At the very least, better yet, in addition to, have them take a picture of the front and back of their card with their phone. They always have their phone. They may forget everything else, but they'll have their phone. Minnesota state law requires students to have a tetanus within the last 10 years and both MMR vaccinations. These are the same requirements as Minnesota high school graduates have as well. So if you graduated from a Minnesota high school, you don't need to do a thing. You are already compliant. If you graduated from out of state, then you will need to provide the dates of the required immunizations to us here at Health Services. We need the two dates for the MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella, and a tetanus or Tdap within the last 10 years. You can do that by filling out the student immunization form found through either one of these links. The form is self-reporting, so you don't need a doctor's signature or a formal immunization record. However, we are happy to accept a full immunization record instead if that's what you would prefer. When documentation is received by health services and found to be compliant, this will be noted in the student's account. Students have a grace period of one semester to get this information into us before an immunization hold will be placed on the student's account and they will not be able to register until found compliant. If your student is in need of these immunizations, they can make an appointment with us. There are also recommended vaccinations. However, these are not required. We always recommend a flu shot. In fact, we offer two flu shot clinics on campus in the fall. They are convenient, quick, and free. Receiving the shot takes only a few minutes. Most students stop in between classes. If a student cannot make the flu shot clinics, they are welcome to make an appointment at health services and it is still free of charge. Confidentiality and consent is something we take very seriously. Health services follows HIPAA regulations and we will not release any information to anyone without the student's written consent, even if you pay for their insurance. For students attending UMD under the age of 18, consent is required from parents to use health services. If this pertains to you, please see the minor consent form on our website or through this link. A final note on consent. Due to the nature of college health, we generally do not do blanket consents that last for a year. We are happy to release information for whatever the patient chooses, but we keep releases to dates of service or specific diagnoses. 
They may be fine with us talking to you about their broken ankle, but maybe not about something else. Health Services has a stellar health education department. They are all over campus doing outreach and presentations on sexual health, bystander intervention, alcohol and drug harm reduction, and the super popular PAWS events, which brings in adorable animals to campus for some pet therapy right when students are feeling super stressed. Yet another reason, health services may be a bit better than your family practice clinic at home. I mean, who can compete with puppies? Really though, if your student has any interest in public health or health education, I would suggest they give us a call and get involved. We have internship opportunities as well as peer health educator groups they can get involved in for some great experience. Okay, so what do we need from you and your student? If your student is a non-Minnesota high school grad, submit the dates for their required immunizations to health services. Send your student with a copy of their own insurance card. Update the preferred clinic to UMD Health Services if needed. If your student will be under 18 years old while on campus, please fill out the consent for minor form and submit to Health Services. This is our contact information. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thanks for hanging in there with me and welcome to Bulldog Country. Thank you.